Hey y'all, welcome to another Q99.7 My Voice with the Georgia Department of Behavioral Health. I'm Adam Baum. I got Bert from The Bert Show. Obviously, coming up later, we're going to have awesome conversation with Grammy Award-winning artist Kelly Clarkson. That's going to be big. But we want to catch up with our friends from the Georgia Department of Behavioral Health. You know, we're going to have some fantastic conversation here, Bert, um, and everybody watching. This is big, um, having the Georgia Department of Behavioral Health on. We want to bring some of uh, some of the most important people that have some great things and great advice for us. I want to bring in, guys, Jill Mays who is the Director, Office of Behavioral Health Prevention and Federal Grants. We're also going to bring in Donna Dent, the Assistant Director of the Office of Behavioral Health Prevention and Federal Grants. And then Brian Lay is the Senior Coordinator of that. And they're all from the Georgia Department of Behavioral Health and Development Mental Disabilities. And, you know, Bert, as they come in here, I think the last My Voice we did with Megan Trainer, you know, we were, it was like three weeks ago, and Everything was still pretty new in terms of how are we going to deal with the, the stuff that we're dealing with, with being cooped up, with not knowing. And now we are three weeks later, Bert, and I think some other things are popping up, like what about going back for a job? Is my job going to be there? What about our kids? If, I, if I'm a kid I'm, and I'm going to go back to high school my senior year or going off to college, how is that going to look? Yeah, there's so much more anxiety now because um, we really did think, I think, a couple of weeks ago that this might be a blip or maybe a couple of months ago. And we're realizing now this is not a blip at all. So you're starting to see um, more anxiety. Uh, we're going to talk to Jill and Don and Brian about that. More anxiety, more depression. Look, you might have been happy last week. You felt fine. And then all of a sudden this week you can't get out of bed. Um, what do you do? And that's why we're bringing Don O'Brien and Jill in today to talk about those things because it is a brand new world and the uncertainty of when this is going to be over has got us all anxious. So with that, let's go ahead and start introducing everybody. Hi, Donna. Hi, Bert. Glad to meet you. I'm the Assistant Director with the Office of Behavioral Health, uh, DB, we'll call DHDD frequently. Glad to be on with you today. Well, thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Adam and I were just saying that this, these are really uncertain times right now. Um, we're starting to see some of the numbers and some of them are really, really sad with suicide and anxiety. So for, for those that felt okay last week, or maybe they felt okay the week before, and now they're waking up and they're like, not so okay. Um, what are the signs of just going through just kind of a bummer of a day or two bummers of a day or three bummers of a day and then realizing that, okay, I've got a real serious problem now that I need to talk to somebody about. Well, when we, when we look for warning signs for suicide and signs of depression and anxiety, a lot of it is just what you said. It's feel, the feelings of sadness. Uh, if someone is talking a lot about uh, being sad, wanting to kill themselves, looking up um, ways of doing that. If they're having trouble eating or sleeping sometimes, if their mood are, are, is down and depressed or they're feeling very anxious for quite a while, usually it's a, a, you notice the change in behavior from someone who used to be more calm and relaxed and now is anxious or the opposite. Um, someone who was more hyper and active and all of a sudden becomes very calm. Those are some of the warning signs, but a lot of the things what we need to do is just talk to the person, ask the question. And if someone's feeling that way, talk to someone because sometimes just venting, as you mentioned about talking with your wife sometimes, it just venting it, uh, talking to another person can help relieve, release that pressure valve and release some of that stress. So uh, we recommend looking for those types of signs where the person is having a change in their behavior. They're, uh, again, with all the stress of COVID or losing a job or uh, the chaos and change in their lifestyles can create sadness and create uh, confusion and unsureness. And uh, for people who are used to having some sense of control, that can be very, very disconcerting. So look for those signs and talk with that person to see if you can assist them with getting some additional help. We have some helplines listed up there for you. We have our Georgia Crisis Access Line and we have our COVID Emotional Support Line. You can talk with somebody on those and they can help you figure out whether or not what your next step would be. Um, yeah. So that would be where I would have people start. 
You know, we want to bring Brian uh, Lay in here. And Brian, you know, we talked a couple of weeks ago, um, and, and people are dealing with some of the same things, um, you know, with coping with the stress, with dealing with the anxiety. You know, Bert and I really wanted to focus um, a little bit of this on, you know, the job situation is a huge um, stress right now in people. The stress of not knowing if your kids are going to physically go back to school, if you're going to have to teach them again. What are some healthy ways, Brian, of coping that we can do to alleviate that stress or anxiety during this time, everything that's going on? That's a really great question. Um, there are actually many helpful ways of coping to alleviate stress or anxiety during this time. Uh, it's important to note that data has shown that hospitalizations from substance use actually have increased in times after disaster or periods of high stress, around like 33%, something like that. Some tips to cope include deep breathing exercises, spirituality, humor, reading. Um, eating balanced meals is very important. And something that we talk about a lot, but we don't necessarily do, and I'm guilty of it myself, is uh, not getting enough sleep. Try not to check that email at midnight, you know? Uh, try to have a good work life or school life balance, um, especially if you're a parent at home, teaching your kids at home right now. Don't forget to stay connected to friends and loved ones, to have someone to talk to. It, it's important to note that uh, I said it before and I'll say it again, social uh, distancing does not mean social isolation. Children, um, so yeah. where should people go? Where, where can they go? If you're in Georgia, where do you go mm -hmm. online if you're feeling some of these things or you see somebody in the family that might be showing some signs of stress now also in an extreme way? What are some of those services that are available? Well, the one that I especially want to really highlight and Jill um, is probably about to talk about it right now is more of the emotional support line. I'm going to pass this to Jill. Yeah, I was going to say, um, and I wanted to say um, to Adam and Bert, our commissioner, Judy Fitzgerald, says hello. Um, she, is, she is very committed to um, providing and making these resources available, but there's so many resources out there now. Um, the one especially that we wanted to talk about was the COVID-19 emotional support line, and the number is there on the screen for viewers and that line is manned by trained volunteers who are able to provide um, that listening ear, but also to direct callers to resources that will match the need that they have. Um, we also have GCAL, the George Crisis and Access Line, and that's for anybody who is actually experiencing a mental health crisis, such as suicidal thoughts or um, other active psychosis or things like that, and you can call the George Crisis and Access Line. The number is also posted there to get assistance from licensed clinicians who can help assess the situation and then provide the appropriate referral, or we even have mobile response teams that can come right to the home or right to the workplace if an assessment is needed there. And then there are all kind of peer agencies like the Georgia Council on Substance Abuse, the Georgia uh, Mental Health Consumer Network, National Alliance on Mental Illness that all have what are called warm lines, which are lines that people can call in um, who have a mental health diagnosis or a substance abuse diagnosis, and they can get support from their peers, people who've been there, who've walked that path, uh, who can help them just kind of de-escalate a situation, provide just some emotional support, or again, link people to other resources and even the DBHDD website, we have links to lots of resources in the community that are out there. So help is available and people should, you know, not shy away from asking for help because it's okay not to be okay right now. This real unusual time that we're in. So there's resources. People just have to reach out. I think this is what was really important uh, just to bring up again this time, Jill, is that I've known people to say that I'm just scared of calling because I know that they're, they're going to have my information and they're going to know who I am and maybe I just want to talk to somebody. So can you speak to that just really quickly about the anonymity of it? Yes, it's, it's anonymous. You can call, you can just tell them your first name, you can give them somebody else's name. The important thing is that you call to get the help. Uh, we're really more concerned with getting you the information and the resources than writing down your address and all of that information. Uh, if you want to share that information, you can, but it's not required for you to get help. Donna, I want to bring you in on this one, you know, more so with um, the bird show than myself, you know, they can take a temperature of um, Atlanta and, you know, society right now of how everybody's feeling with the phone calls they get. What about from your perspective? 
what is the temperature of people's mental health from the people that you are seeing um, contacting you or just what you guys are observing overall in the state of Georgia? Well, I'd say we are observing a great deal of um, people, you know, being thrown off, off their kilter. Uh, for the most part, they're, they are trying to deal with it. There is a lot of worry and concern um, and fear because it's changed not only in terms of our daily lives, our daily structure, but it's also changed a lot of our um, habits and rituals and norms. Um, we talk about going to school. We've talked about things like people who had to go to funerals and they are different. People who have had to deal with job changes. So it's a lot of change that that the majority of our country is going through. Now the positive is we're all going through it together. So there's been a lot of pulling together and assisting and helping each other and being good neighbors and being there for each other, which, which is the good side of it. Um, and as Jill said, uh, the key is recognizing that you are stressed, you're not the only ones, and that there are some services and some people out there to help you. So you need to reach out uh, whether you think you have a severe diagnosis or you're just feeling blue and you're not sure what to do, sometimes just formulating a plan can help. Thinking beyond today to tomorrow, of what do I need to plan for or to get done and how to get that done and having someone walk you through that can really help uh, give you uh, motivation and help you get past that sadness today so that you can move on for tomorrow. So I'd say, yeah, the, a lot of the public are concerned, are worried about what this will mean, how they will make their ends meet, but they are banding together, they are dealing with it, and they are, if they are coming for help, we are trying to assist them in every way that we can. And that's the good part, that there are people there to assist. Hey, Brian, I think that uh, we, we sort of have to, at some point or another, talk about worst case scenario. So let's just say that there's somebody using um, and they overdose. There's an emergency situation. At that point, what do you do? Well, the important thing is to not freak out, not to worry, um, because worse comes to worse, if there is an overdose or any emergency situation during this time or at all times, call 911. Uh, here in the state of Georgia, we have our Georgia 911 medical amnesty law. It provides limited immunity from arrest, charge, and prosecution for possession of certain drugs or alcohol or drug paraphernalia for individuals who are experiencing drug overdose and if they are in need of medical care. Uh, the law actually protects the person who seeks the medical assistance in addition to the victim. So the goal is to save lives. Please stay until help arrives because you know there's nothing more important than getting the person the care that they need. You know, Jill, we wanna we wanna recap. I think it's so important those those phone numbers and the ways to contact you. And can you give, you know, speaking to someone that is in need, uh, just some encouragement of getting over this hump, however long this hump is going to be, because Bert and I talked about this before you guys got on here, Jill, that we don't know, there's no end date to this. And we're not sure if this is going to go, this, this weird life we're all in for another year. Can you uh, not only give us the numbers to contact, but a little bit of encouragement for those people that are feeling that stress to get over this hump. Definitely, you are so right that we, we just, there's so much that we don't know. Um, but we do know, just like Donna said, that we are all in this together and that help and support is available. Um, the emergency support line, um, that number is 1-800-715-42, actually that's, um, GCAL is one 800 715 and then the emergency support line, 1-866-399-8938. Um, and again, I just want to encourage people that there's so much help that's out there. You wouldn't imagine the online support groups that are popping up that you can find on the different advocacy agency websites. We do a DBHCD every afternoon at two o'clock. We do what's called the two by two which is a webinar series for healthcare providers and emergency responders. Um, sometimes we, we forget the tremendous amount of stress that they're under on a daily basis for hours on end. So we've got kind of a 30 minute break during the day that you can log on to that webinar and there are different topics on there. We do fun stuff. We did one last week on cooking your way out of stress. Mm -hmm. um, that was really fun. We did one that was kind of a 30 minute dance break to just 
you know, do things like that can kind of get your mind off focusing on anything related to COVID-19 and just getting, even if it's just for 30 minutes, back to something that seems normal to you. Um, for some folks, that is on Sunday morning, if their church is doing a live stream, just doing that for 30 minutes, just trying to make sure every day you do something that's that's kind of a reminder that, you know, yes, life is going to go back to stability, have my family around me, I have my friends that I can reach out to on Zoom and Skype and all those platforms. Just stay connected to people. That's the important thing because that's the reminder that there are other people who are dealing with this same thing. I had a conversation with my daughter who's a college student the other day and she was like, mom, everything that, you know, made sense and added stability to my life, that's just kind of gone right now. What do I do? So we're going to have to look for new ways of, of being during this time. Uh, but still, Again, we're all in it to, in this together. There's help available. DBHCD is here, um, so reach out for support. It doesn't, you know, mean that you know something is wrong with you. Um, if you didn't need a little help and support right now, maybe we think that was kind of <laughs> wrong because uh, it's a little odd for all of us. So just just stay connected. Reach out for help. You got to remember, I think the thing that I, I just want to stress before we take off here is just that, hey, man, you are not alone. If you are feeling these things and you are feeling depressed and you are feeling isolated and you are feeling dark and you feel like you're the only person in the world going through this, we all want to assure you that you absolutely are not. You are loved. You are cared about. And there are plenty of places that you can go that they will remind you of that. And life is worth living. Definitely. Definitely. So, and a reminder, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. So we all, you know, this is a time designated in our country to everybody focusing on our mental wellness. And, and I have this phrase I love to say, be kind to your mind. Uh, so that's something for all of us to remember. Sure. Hey, Jill and Brian and Donna, you guys are the best resource we could have right now in Georgia for everybody. And we appreciate you guys coming on and doing this and offering your expertise and, and just offering your, your guidance to people right now. So thank you so much for coming on My Voice again. Thank you, Travis. And so we want to bring in Grammy award-winning artist Kelly Clarkson from her ranch in Montana. So great to catch up with her. We've talked to her at award shows. We've had her on in studio and on the phone, on The Voice, her own talk show. This is big to have Kelly Clarkson on My Voice. Oh, sorry. I was like, I was like, <laughs> emails. <laughs> I swear to you, I've been doing these for months now, and all of them start the same way with all of us going, can you hear me? Can you, can you not? I know, me too. Even Zoom calls, like all the people I've been doing interviews with for the TV show, it's been hysterical. Yeah. So, I, I like, it'll be like, everyone's face will go and like just right. freeze. <laughs> <laughs> Have Kelly, what, what room are you doing the, the Zoom in? I've found I'm, I'm in a walk-in closet right now because I'm out of places to do it to make it sound good and look good. Oh, my gosh. I've given up on that dream. Um, I, like, sounding good and looking good. It's, I mean, it's, uh, uh, fortunately for me, I did have the voice lives kind of happen. So they sent us all this gear for the show, and then we've kind of just been, like, using it for all the other things, like, whatever else I'm doing, so that's been really handy, but beforehand, I, it was a little more difficult, but, yeah, you know, yeah. at the, I mean, at the end of the day, we're, I'm healthy, so whatever, it's fine. Yeah, right. hey, listen, before we jump into how you're doing, because that's very important here, uh, <laughs> welcome to the, the My Voice here, and I really want to jump in um, to the new single, I Dare You. I've watched the videos, I've listened to it, I've seen the articles. Why is that song so important right now for us in this moment in time in the world? Well, it's funny. I mean, the song was always supposed to be released in April, and obviously no one knew the pandemic was coming. Well, I guess some people did. They keep shouting that from a rooftop, but others didn't. And, um, and so, you know, life just kind of happened, and we felt like it was still a good time to release the song because I know it sounds cheesy, especially coming from a, an artist, but you know m music is the one thing like especially if it's something fresh and no one's heard that's that's a cool thing you have something new to kind of listen to and vibe with when you're having down days because i don't know about everybody else but this has been like a giant roller coaster of emotions for me this whole pandemic um you know just being an at home like working mom now like it's a lot um but you know we thought it would not be a nice escapism in that sense and also i, I feel like there's um 
this comes with uncertainty comes with a lot of fear and and everybody has their own relative fear going on you know like whatever that is in their world um that's relative to their circumstances everybody has that going on so you know the whole message of the song is basically to choose to love and you know i know everybody keeps saying that the mr rogers thing of like be you know find the helpers and be the helper kind of thing and and so it's nice to to love people and to love and and share that and kind of it it's an act that also separates from yourself um you know from from just living in that that fear in this time so we we kept you know with the release date because we thought it well, what better time, you know, and I'm singing in six different languages and we, the whole point of the song was to globally connect us and, yeah. and, you know, I was going to do a different artist as well, like more than just these languages. And then the pandemic happened. And then I was like, wow, we've never been more globally connected. So what a cool time to release that. So, um, yeah, I mean, unfortunately it was a good time to release this, this song with this message. But, um, fortunately I think we all need those messages and reminders. It's a beautiful idea to record it with so many artists in so many different uh, languages also. Um, how did you decide which languages and how easy was it for everybody just to get on the same page and do this song together? Uh, well, it took a lot of time. It's definitely been a labor of love in the sense of finding the right artists. Um, I grew up singing in different languages, so the, the reason why I chose um, three of them, uh, being Spanish and French, I sang a lot in Spanish, French, and German growing up um, singing opera, so in Latin and Italian, all those kind of languages. I've never done Hebrew and Arabic, but um, but I've, I've always been obsessed with those languages. I think they're so pretty and they sound so cool. Um, so, it, you know, there, there was a, these were our first ones that I kind of, at the top was like, uh, and then we kind of figured out how long it kind of took to find the artist that not only um, had the range to kind of sing the song with me, it's a, it's a big song, um, but also had the, you know, I was very adamant about, you know, I don't know a lot of other artists in different territories, so I'm, you know, in the trust tree a bit with my label, and I, I wanted to make sure that the artist identified with the message, and it was kind of a, a lifestyle thing for them, too, um, and they weren't just calling it in. They were kind of those artists that kind of bled that message as well in their lives, so um, it took a minute to get it all together, but um, it, it came together, you know, so beautifully in the end. It, I did have to record all five different languages in four days, which is what I absolutely did not want to do, but <laughs> but that's how <laughs> life happens sometimes, so, or a lot of times. Um, but anyway, it was, it was, it's really cool. I think we all grew up in this bubble. Like a lot of Europeans, they grow up, you know, three or four different languages under their belt. Mm -hmm. So we, we don't, generally we know maybe one and it's Spanish from where I'm from, I'm Texan. So, um, but it's just a beautiful thing to be able to communicate a message, even if you don't know how to speak German or Arabic, you know the English version and you know what the, the mentality, the emotional state of the song is and what the message is. It's just written in a different language. So it's kind of cool. It connects us and that, that communication wall is broken down. Yeah. You know, Kelly, me and Bert were talking about this before you jumped on here. And I think this is great for parents. You know, you can speak to this. Do you have any tips at home with the kids to explain to them what's going on? but to make sure the parents aren't going out of their minds because Bert and I talked about this. And at this point in the quarantine across the country, I think everybody's kind of losing their minds, trying to figure out how to keep everything sane at home, keep yourself sane. And I think it's a, a lot of people are going through it. Yeah, I always, my, it's been the biggest joke with like mom friends of mine. Um, <laughs> we're like, if you aren't, like going through it emotionally during this time that just means somebody else is because they're pulling your weight <laughs> uh, because this is a really hard thing like people have become teachers we've become nurses to some point like your kid gets hurt and i'm like unless you're gonna die we're not going right. to a hospital <laughs> like unless unless it's like real bad you know so we've we've kind of had to become all these things that we aren't great at honestly a cook whoa i feel so sorry for my kids you should too <laughs> I'm not good at it, like, but it's edible and it keeps them alive. It sustains life. So, um, but it's just, and, and all the laundry, it's like when nobody goes anywhere and we're in a very muddy kind of snowy thing. So literally I'm doing laundry every day, um, if not every other day. So it's, it's just an insane time for a lot of parents. And I mean, I'd love to bring comfort, but I mean, just, I'll bring comfort in the sense that we're all, that we are all in that together, <laughs> the insanity of it, because it is literally 
groundhog day, like for a lot of parents, especially working parents. And there's just really nothing to describe it other than like some days are good and some days are bad. And every time I have a bad day, I call my mom and sister. And I'm like, oh my God, I don't know. Like how long will this last? Like, and you know, they remind me too, like, this is just this day, like tomorrow is going to be awesome. And they're usually right. It's usually an emotional roller coaster, but honestly, parents, you need to give your kids a little bit of grace on their attitude. And I've had to tell myself that too, because they're trapped. They literally don't, our parent, our kids have not left this environment for uh, almost three months now. Like we've been here. Like, so it's been a crazy amount of time for them not even to go to the grocery store. Like they don't do anything. Um, you know, so that's got to mess up a little kid's mind, you know? Yeah, all of them. You know, like uh, I was so particular about how much screen time my kids were getting before this. And now right. I'm like, you know what? Learn <laughs> everything you need to learn on YouTube. You're fine. Yeah. No, it is funny because we are really hardcore about screen time too. And, but I've actually had to implement us going, oh, we're lucky we live on a ranch here. So it's like, you know, if you were stuck inside a house and had no yard or no real outside opportunity, I get that. I would totally be like, you're fine. Cinderella's great. Um, but <laughs> you know, here we try and make them, even if they don't want to, we're like, okay, well, you have to get in the can with us and you have to go four wheeling with me. You have to do something to get outside. Like, and it does them a world of good. Like they might not want to in the beginning, but then you make it like a, you know, we go look for treasure and we, you know, go find the best tree to climb. And, you know, we do stuff like that to try and make it fun or whatever. But uh, most times parents, we all just feel like clowns trying to entertain our children. So it's just like, yeah, like constantly. Right. <laughs> I have, there is nothing to do like chore wise around my house anymore because I can't stand you. <laughs> there's nothing to, I'm, I'm, creating, I'm creating chores for them to do that don't need to be done just so they're doing something. Oh, I wish we were together. You could share our chores. There is so much to be done here. It's because we're a working ranch and we aren't set up yet. So we don't, like we literally, I've never, I never thought I'd do this in my entire life, but we were in this like little VRBO cabin next to our ranch because we don't have a home here yet. And there's not enough rooms. So, you know, our teenager was in the living room, like living. And, and it's like that for an extended period of time is, a, is hard, like yeah. on him, on us, everybody. So I finally, I was like, I found this house that literally is adjacent to our ranch. And I was like, I don't even care how much it is. <laughs> I was like, as long as it's got four bedrooms for everyone, like to have or the kids to have their, I was like, I, I was like, I didn't never thought it, my business manager was like, so you're going to buy it. I was like, yes, I am. Yes. <laughs> I was like, I don't know how long this is going to last. And every time I talk to my doctor friends or even friends in LA, like to get back to work, it just keeps getting extended. And I'm like, I can't, like everybody needs a bedroom. Like, you know, yeah, so right. it's, it's, yeah. So we're, we're constantly in a state of unpacking or, you know, trying to make the house work. So we're not bored. <laughs> T tell me this, Kelly, you're, you're not bored with, with so many jobs. How is this kind of affecting? I mean, obviously we know you've got to uh, do your talk show from home. You've got to do stuff with a voice at home. How does it affect your work mode? Because it's got to, for me and Bert, I mean, we're, we've been doing radio for two months at home and the, the human connection's gone. What about you? Like, how, energy, has it affected yeah. it positively or negatively for you in those shows? Uh, there's like, it's like pros and cons with all of them. Uh, you know, I guess it, it, the problem is, is I'm already used to being very busy, but I'm also used to a schedule. Like, so I can do, like, literally I look at my team and say, I can accomplish any schedule as long as I know what's happening and there are no surprises. Because that's the, it's the, it's even like financially speaking with families, it's like, okay, I have my money set, but I can't afford flat tires. <laughs> like, I can't afford like for anything to go wrong right now. I need to save up a little. It's like the same thing with scheduling for me. Like, I was like, my mental and emotional state can't handle just like, you know, on top of the 17 things I've already done today, you're adding to because everything's important and needs to get done. <laughs> and mm -hmm. so um, that's been a struggle. And you, there's no one I literally, literally was telling my husband last night on our drive home at like midnight, once we actually finished with Step of the Voice, um, I was like, you know, it's, it's the most frustrating part is that you can't even be mad at anyone. Like you can't, 
there's there, it's just what it is like everyone's just you know treading water as along with you trying to get it done so and it's remotely y'all will know this things even if it's radio and you're not you know with even if it's some job that you think oh you can get it done it's it's all extra hard it's all extra difficult and 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 then things just come up out of nowhere you know because especially with the voice with the live so it's a constant just like juggling up that's the problem that's been hard for me is the, the juggling and not knowing the schedule because it's literally my schedule right before i was looking at my phone when i came in and i something just changed <laughs> it's oh. like, and i have a whole other song to do today <laughs> it's like oh, and it's nice. it's fine like but it's just like one of those things where it's like oh my god every day is just like <laughs> and do this and do this and you're like okay um yeah. but you know we're trying to entertain everybody to distract everyone so i get it and but the frustrating part is that there's no one you can be mad at except for you know the virus but like there so that's frustrating you can there's no one to point blame at <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, a, Kelly, we, we, Bert, I'm going to let you have the last question. This 15 minutes went by like this. No, look, look, Kelly, oh. they told us we had 15 minutes with you. I'm like, I've done interviews with her before. That's one question for Kelly. She'll I don't know, because I'm so <laughs> long-winded. <laughs> you can ask another one. <laughs> uh, we don't wanna, look, you got a, a lot of these lined up today, so I just want to uh, congratulate you on the song. It's really, really great. Um, I know you must be so frustrated. Like you said, I know you want to get out. You want to share it with people. The tour now has been postponed also. That's got to yeah. be frustrating for you. Everything's on, on hold, right? Yeah, everything's on hold. But honestly, I keep reminding myself, um, especially because I have a lot of young musician friends, like even from The Voice, like artists I know, like those artists are really struggling. That's their income. You know, um, for, fortunately for artists that are already established, like, at least you have, like, you're not surviving on your tour income anymore, you know? Um, that's the beginning days of an artist. So, um, you know, anytime something gets hard, I just remind myself of all those people that I know that are just, like, trying so hard to just make ends meet at this point. Um, because I know emotionally, mentally, this is hard, but also economically, this is freaking people out. Like, I have a lot of friends that have lost jobs, family members that can't continue their business because it... it it is of the most importance that humans are involved. <laughs> like, you know, they have to come in your store. They have to, you know, so it's, it's just kind of a, anytime I get like, you know, kind of like, Ooh, I just kind of remind myself of that. I don't know what, Ooh, it means, but it's, you felt it. <laughs> I have said this about you since I, I talked to you the very first time, and this is years and years ago, you are the most unaffected celebrity, the most an unaffected famous person I have ever, ever talked to. And I am so glad you're still that, that same person. Oh, I was still, like, I'm not sure if that's a compliment, but I'll take it. <laughs> it is. 100% a compliment. <laughs> uh, no, I, I honestly, I'm, I'm so chill. And every time I meet fans that freak out, I'm like, aim higher, man. I'm so okay. normal. It's not. But I think that's what also is cool about this time too, is it really has, we were trying to do that with the TV show, like break down these walls of like, I feel like especially politically faith why all these things like there was like celebrity and then there were like non-celebrity. And it's like, why are we separate? Like everyone's the same. So it kind of is a cool moment in the sense that everyone's been brought back down to that, you know, even like playing field of like, even like celebrities, there's a whole Huffington Post article about is celebrity vanity gone now? Or what's the, you know, what's the future of that? Because all of us are, you know, low key, like hardly any makeup and hardly any hair done. And, and I think it's nice. I think that part of it's nice because while we do love playing dress up and we love the artists to be able to create with us and you come up with these amazing things at the end of the day, it's a nice reminder that like, no matter what we do, we literally are all in the same boat right now. And, and I like that about it. The connection yeah. of that. Kelly, it's I always see, like talking. Sorry, so long-winded. <laughs> no, no, it's always like talking to one of your friends from back in the day when, when we get together. <laughs> it's so awesome. You're the best. No, thanks well, for thank y'all for taking the time. I appreciate it. Of Thank course. You. Thanks for sharing everything and, and, and coming on my voice, Kel. We'll talk to you soon, okay? All right. Bye, y'all. Stay healthy. Uh, you too, Kel. And I love it, Bert. I love having her on. Isn't it? Isn't it? It's like like you graduated with her back in high school and you're just catching up with her or you knew her in college and it's like the same person and 100%. i think it's so cool every time we get a hold of her she really is the most unaffected celebrity i've ever met in my life she's so humble and this is just not like just because she's doing an interview this is how she is all the time she she's fantastic she's great yeah it's great to catch up with you again man i think this is the <laughs> this is like the yeah. second or third time i've seen you in two or three months now so at one point or another man I'm going to give you a big old hug. It's going to be a while, but I'm going to give you a big old hug. All right, hang in there, man.
Sounds good. Thanks for everybody for watching. We'll see you soon. Thank you.